Next one, 62-year-old with progressive lower extremity weakness and spasticity. T2 on the left, T1 with contrast on the right. So what do you think this is? Is this a cord infarct? Is this ADEM? Is it a hemangioblastoma? Is it a type 1 vascular malformation? Or is it a type 3 AVM? Your response, please. You are good. Okay. Um, you knew this was coming too. This is another one of these, along with OPLL. You knew there's going to be a fistula in this, uh, and you got it correctly. Excellent. Type 1 AV fistula, spinal dural fistulas, more common in males. Again, the classic is progressive stepwise myelopathy. You're looking for the secondary effects of the fistula that is out peripherally. You're looking for essentially venous hypertensive myelopathy, high signal within the cord. Here's another example, uh, T2, high signal within the cord, look for the serpentine flow voids, uh, and an enhancement pattern that, you know, for lack of a better term, I just kind of call ischemic, kind of vague, very ill-defined margins, uh, looks very different, and kind of overlaps with an inflammatory sort of ADEM pattern, vague, not well-defined margins, very different from astrocytoma ependymoma enhancement, much better defined margins, laurel wreath enhancement. So the symptoms are intramedullary ischemia and edema to, to raised uh, venous pressure, back pressure, and don't have to have flow voids, but it's nice when you see them. Differential, broad, a uh, variety of vascular malformations. Anytime you see big vessels, is there a tumor that's feeding that I'm looking, seeing the vessel secondarily? Myelitis is going to be unusual to have big vessels associated with that, and certainly infarction, lack of vessels. Uh, I'm not uh, really dealing with big flow voids. So the following are going to be true about spinal AVMs, except, so we're going to talk about classification. Type 1 is a fistula between radicular artery and intradural medullary vein. Type 2 is an intramedullary glomus malformation. Type 3 is the juvenile malformation. And type 4 is the dorsal intradural fistula. Which of those is not correct? Here's the story of a lovely lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls. Very good. Oh, that's, uh, the answer is, the incorrect one is type 4, the dorsal intradural fistula. You know, now if you know that, that is incredible minutia. You are to be congratulated on that. Uh, I mean, I can barely keep the 1 through 4 straight, let alone. Uh, so, again, the dorsal intradural fistula here is the classification scheme. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, which... I sort of break down one and four are the bookends, those are the fistulas, and then you have the you know, AVMs in between, the two and three, three being the uh, juvenile, fortunately very uncommon, that's the metameric involvement, soft tissue, extradural as well as intradural components. Now if that wasn't bad enough, Spetzler has gone and again modified that classification. I just learned the one through four and now we're trying to throw that away, uh, making it I think easier, again looking at is it a fistula or is it an AVM? That's the classification scheme. So where we were with, with the 1A is now called a dorsal intradural fistula. And as you can see, the, uh, the type 4 now is called a ventral. So that was the, the question. It's a ventral fistula, not the dorsal fistula. So you did very well. Let's do the next one. 58-year-old with progressive numbness, tingling in the lower extremities.